Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Fan Service, the video game. I'm CPC Gamer, and yes, I can appreciate that I usually wait until fairly late on in the run of videos before I start making fun of a game's title like that, but this is actually a really short game, so I kind of need to get all the jokes out the way now before I run out of videos. So, hey, there you go. That's actually something I kind of want to bring up. This game is pretty short, but not as short as it could be. You know how most modern, well-thought-out and well-written video games, they only give you a selection of characters before you reach the end? Obviously, this is not a well-thought-out and well-written video game, so you have to fight your way through every single character on the roster before you reach the end. And by the time you do reach the end, you kind of just... You give up. You, you fall out and you don't care anymore, you know? Honestly, I would not mind if one or two characters didn't appear in the run. Just to make the game that... Just to give it an element of randomness, make it a bit more punchy, you know? But the game is what it is, so I suppose we can't fault it for that. Anyways, our first opponent today is Death Doll Kakashi, a.k.a not Rick Jones from Splatterhouse. Nah, but seriously, this guy is totally Rick Jones from Splatterhouse. In fact, his alternative costume sees him wearing the Terror Mask. That's how not a ripoff he is. Kakashi comes from a game called Splattermaster, and I'm actually going to pick up a copy of that, because it sounds like something that I would really enjoy, because it's not only is it a D3 title, it's completely stupid. It's basically what would happen if Splatterhouse and Streets of Rage 3 had a baby, and then there were chainsaws. So, Splatterhouse 2, pretty much. Can't complain with that. Although, speaking of complaining, and lord knows I like to do that, the game, this game, is a little bit quirky regarding Kakashi's backstory. Like... You saw at the beginning of this fight, he said he wants to be a real boy because he's a scarecrow. In other times, he'll say that he doesn't want to be a real boy because he's a scarecrow. Other times, he says he's a demon or a monster or whatever. Given what this game is and who made it, I don't think I'm allowed to complain about, you know, canon and continuity. Although with that said, D3 tend to be really rigid with their continuity, and they do tend to say that everything that happens in their games actually happens, which is really interesting when you consider Ryo and all the games that she's appeared in, that apparently she has actually gone cutting swathes of zombies down in front of her. And speaking of which, meet Aya, everybody. As if on cue. Now, I know that I mentioned Aya briefly in the Let's Play we did a Beautiful Katamari, but I really, really like her character design. The whole samurai with a big cowboy hat, the scarf, the big old boots made for walking. I like that. The bikini thing, that's mostly just an added bonus. Frankly, if she was in like a t-shirt and jeans or... A Duster jacket or something, that would still work for me as long as she had everything else that I just mentioned, you know? Because hey, Stetsons are cool. Aya is from a game, well, a series of games in fact, called Onechan Bara Samurai Bikini Squad. And she dresses up like this, goes out and cuts down hordes of zombies, as I mentioned. There is actually a canonical reason that she goes out and fights in a bikini. And that is, the more blood she gets on her and on her sword, the more powerful she becomes with her attacks. Which, hey, kudos to the writers for finding out a way of getting so much fan service into such a stupid premise, you know? And not to say anything against the gaming community of which I am a part, but it worked well enough for Onechan Bara to be a breakout series insofar as there have been quite a few games featuring Aya, wherein she just goes on a rampage and kills zombies. In fact, there's actually been one for the 360, which admittedly was a budget and fairly embarrassing game, 
But, uh, hey, at least they got one. There's also one coming out for the PS3, I do believe. Hmm. May have to check my sources on that one. Anyways, in terms of all-star fighters, Aya is a really good character because she does actually have a bit of everything. She has really long range, especially with the sword. She has good speed, high strength, good defense, a ridiculous amount of health, and she also has an earthquake move. Now, Damdo, the character you would expect to have on because he is a tank, he does not have an earthquake move. Aya does. She takes the sword out of the small sidearm on her left leg, jams it into the floor, and if you're stood on the floor, no matter where you are in the arena, you fall over and die. Kind of like that. This is another reason I is pretty good. She's she's strong enough to take down even a competent compute computer player, human player, excuse me. Something I kind of want to mention is that she's one of the few characters that has a, a decent or noticeable idle animation, and the timing on said animation is set up in such a way that she'll do it just as a screen fades to black after knocking you out. That's pretty great that not only is she capable of knocking you out, she then goes on to, you know, rub salt in the wound. What a jerk. Although with that said, and I'm not sure who's written this on the side of my LP notes, possibly me, Aya is my kind of girl insofar as she is completely crazy. Now, okay, I'm going to sort of say this, and I'm not sure that I should say it because... The last time I brought up this topic, it got me into a fight. Like, an actual put up your duke in arms because it's Queensbury rules fight. I think that Aya and Ruby Malone are pretty good examples of strong female characters, to my mind. Because they're very strong, they're very driven by their goals, they're loyal to their goals. Whether those goals are good or not, that's all for debate, and mostly they're not very good goals. But the thing that gets me is that they do things for themselves. They don't have to hide behind equipment or other people's technology like, oh, I don't know, Samus Aran. And yeah, that last sentence was kind of what got me into a fight. And now it's time for the required mirror fight. And the demonstration of why I chose to wear a blue dress for this particular run of the game. Except for the fact that the blue dress is actually really cool and it shows off the character model so much better than the red one. Basically, the game has picked the green dress, which is my palette plus one. And you know what? That is the most... It's the kludgiest way I have seen for picking a color palette. What is wrong with saying pick the first one if you can or pick a random one? Smash Brothers Brawl got that down pretty well. Anyways, Princess Cheval has a pretty unfortunate name. It's either the French word for horse, Cheval, or the actual word shovel. You know, shovel. The manual for All-Star Fighters says that Princess Cheval debuted in My First RPG. The actual title of the game was The First RPG, The Legend of the Successors. It was basically... Well, as it says in the title, the first RPG, is something designed to get children into the notion of role-playing games, the spell system, the in system, using items, conserving items, all that kind of thing. I actually think it's a pretty good game, and it's a shame that it wasn't translated in English, because, well, more people need to play it. Not that I can speak Japanese, by the way, you, you just very quickly work out that, you know, that one is the potion, that one is Phoenix Down, or whatever the game calls it in its native Japanese. There was actually a bit of a misunderstanding between the art departments with the first RPG. In all the anime cutscenes, by the way, the game has digital anime cutscenes, which is pretty freaking amazing for a budget title. Anyways, no. In the budget cutscenes, Princess Cheval is a brunette, but everywhere else in the game, in her sprites, in the 3D model in this game, you can see she's a redhead. Not that I'm complaining. Redheads are cool. Ah, well. She's... I think I said it in one of the earlier videos, they've taken very good care of her as a character. 
that she has a very good move set. She's very, very fluid. It's easy to chain moves together. The only problem with her is she's very floaty when she jumps. It takes a long time to come back down. Anyway, we're reaching the end of this video, so tune in next time for the finale of Let's Play All-Star Fighters. So until next time, goodbye.